to another episode of AI Tapas. These are small plates of AI knowledge for libraries, archives, and museums. Today, we're going to talk with Andre Valso from the National Library of Norway about how do you actually do an AI project, uh, breaking it down just into mechanical steps. Andre, the National Library of Norway has done a lot of local experimentation and projects with AI. How do you approach them? Uh, at the National Library, we have de developed a seven-step approach for solving for creating AI classifiers. And I will walk through all the seven steps here now. Uh, the first step is to define the problem. Wh what is the problem? Why, why does the problem need to be solved? Wh what do we want to achieve? How can we solve the problem? Sketching a, a simple solution for how to approach this problem, and is this a classification problem? Do we have some raw data that the, and some metadata that we want to classify? Uh, so you, might be, you might be looking at uh, new books or magazines coming into the library, and instead of having a human classify them or do subject assignment, you might want to use AI. Is that right? That's totally correct. And it can also be used for pictures or video or other, other mediums. Great. What's the next step? The next step is to define the metrics for success. What, what kind of metrics do you want to use? And what is your target value for this metric? In uh, machine learning projects, you have a lot of metrics you can use to measure performance. And the most normal ones are F1, accuracy, precision, recall and we will explain this more into depth in uh, a later video but the important thing is that the metric you choose should be driven by the problem that your application is intended to solve so you you take a your business problem or your objective and then you characterize that in terms of empirical observable numbers that you can test against that's totally correct yeah all right i'm learning uh, what comes next? The next thing is to gather relevant data for solving this problem. You need some data, for example, books, and you need some metadata that is related to this. And you need a certain amount of this data. So the step number three, the gather data step, is about finding and locating this data and making it available for your development. It can be finding it in your own system or building a web scraper for getting it from the web. And yeah. So uh, AI actually needs data to operate on. Um, so you, that makes a lot of sense. And I imagine that takes a fair amount of effort to uh, pull that together. Yes, it certainly does. And in the next step, when you have the data, you would need to convert this to a format that you can use in the machine learning or deep learning algorithms. And you also need to clean the data, remove redundant information, and also try to keep only the information that is relevant from the data you have downloaded or located for the algorithm. And, and try to extract information. You can generate features and also make a and play with different kind of data representations and step three and four typically takes 80 to 90 percent of the time mm -hmm. in AI project that's why they sometimes say that uh, a data janitor is a more correct term than a data scientist because most of the time is cleaning and gathering data so that uh, is a nice connection to the garbage in garbage out uh, truism so a lot of effort goes into organ gathering the data, organizing it, reducing it, and then transforming it to something that's computable by the AI algorithms. That's correct. Uh, garbage in, garbage out expression right. applies really well to this application too. Uh, once you have data that is ready for the AI algorithm, you can build and train a model. And it's important to 
the first step is in the first iteration, just important to get something that works quickly, a simple model that gives the output you want and does what you want, even suboptimally. And when you have something that works, you can iterate and decide what you'll do further. But uh, like uh, the goal of step five is to train the model from the data you have. And then you, you go to step six, where you evaluate the model, the results of the model by testing the model on a test set. A test set is a selection of data that is representative for what you would typically see in a real world application of the model when you deploy it. And this is data that uh, the machine learning model has never seen before. Mm -hmm. And you test it on model and see what output you get. And you measure how good the model is based on the metric and you compare it to the target goal you have for this metric. And, and if the result is good enough, you can keep the model and, and move on to step seven and deploy it. If it's not good enough, according to your metric, you analyze the results further and you decide to take some actions. And these actions can be, for example, gather more data if that's the solution. It can be to pre-process the data in a different way, clean the data even further, represent it in a different way. And it can be to fine tune the model. A model has a lot of parameters that you can change and tune. And it can also be to change the structure of the model or a totally different algorithm, basically. That's why it's so important to try and fail and get something up and running quickly that you can iterate on and test on test data. I see. So you want to, as you're gathering your data, you want to have both training data to train the model and build it. And you want to have test data to validate that the model is actually doing what you think it should be doing. That's perfectly correct. Yeah. Well, I think uh, this has been a wonderful exploration of some of the mechanics of uh, developing an AI system and an AI approach within an individual institution. And I look forward to a future video where we can actually see a live example. Thanks, Andre. Thank you. Bye.